Welcome to the unscripted American where all things are scripted. <laughs> Just yeah, kidding. Hold on a second. Pull up the script. I have it. It's right here. Anyway, might so as well, might as well be a script. That's a lot of notes. Uh, today we're going to be going over Joe Biden's town hall and kind of discuss, uh, you know, the pros and cons of it. If there are pros or maybe lots of cons kind of break down what these different things mean and uh you know the agenda that's trying to be pushed not all bad not all good some of it you know like with the elderly stuff you know i think we have obligations to taking care of the elderly um i don't know how do you feel about child tax credit i feel like we already do that because with they actually call it the child tax credit mm -hmm. and you actually get these things every year per child you know blah 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 because he's saying like we'll get into it but i think he said what 300 dollar voucher what kind of freaking child care are you gonna get for 300 dollars? i mean no nothing i mean <laughs> my buddy pays 2200 dollars a month now yeah. granny's going to like a very nice child facility where they teach them mm -hmm. Spanish and their ABCs and their one, two, threes. And these kids are like four. So, yeah. And you can get the other, which would be like a, uh, you just basically drop in your kid. Someone is just there, yeah, which is probably not where you actually yeah. want to send your children. But, um, yeah, I just, it's, I mean, it's, I, it's complex. I, I took a few notes on that because something actually, this happened a couple of years ago in um, Oklahoma city, the former mayor um, put in charge of uh, developing local regulations, <laughs> a woman who owned the largest daycare company in the city and where the, I actually, I have some experience with, um, going to a small home child, uh, 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 you know, daycare. Whenever I was growing up, I met my oldest friends there. Um, it was my mom's best friend. It was a fantastic experience. Um, but what some of these, like there was a, an interesting conflict. And once it was uh, revealed that this, this particular person was involved with the, you know, owned the largest company here locally. Um, she was deselected from that role in, in helping devise, you know, local ordinances and whatnot. But what there's a conflict there because some of the problem with a lot of this is when somebody has a connection to a government official who writes the, the laws or the rules or whatever level of government we're talking about, they then have influence to get certain rules passed to where it's harder for people to compete with them. And so what, what we're finding over time is that, because of some local ordinances and things like that, um, that are designed to protect the larger entities, they make it harder for somebody to have a home daycare to keep us down. So now you're looking at, you have to go to a bigger daycare facility. And so cost is being driven up in, in a lot of ways because of, uh, I mean, I, to me, that's corruption. Um, if you're going to be buddies with a politician and that politician is going to allow you to help create rules to protect your business, that to me is corruption. And so, our price inflation across many industries is caused by things like relationships like that. So um, it's, it's just weird because. Don't you think we should, we could like figure this out, you know, amongst ourselves, like anytime we get government involved in something, mm -hmm. it becomes more bureaucratic, Yep. Uh, you know, more red tape, uh, more buddy, buddy, people start making money on the back end of things. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, they start writing curriculums mm -hmm. because there's going to be like, okay, if you're going to get X money from the government, X, Y, Z has to happen. Yeah. And they start having more control mm -hmm. in the development of children. I mean, you see it in public education, <laughs> just about anything that the feds yeah. or even state gets involved in, you know, 
it's not just, oh, we're going to give this money to you, the kindness of our hearts. It's, uh, no, you're going to have to do X, Y, and Z. Yep. And, you know, not only uh, that, it's ridiculous to me. But whatever good and service we're talking about here, when that's, um, when the government's paying for it, the perverse, the, the person providing it is now like, they can really set the prices wherever they want. Mm -hmm. So because they're not negotiating with individuals and they know the government will write that check, they can now raise the price. So then the the other effect of that is people think things are free because the government provides them. Well, taxes, you know, that's not free. So then in order to to pay for those, whatever those goods or services are, they're now more, more tax dollars going to pay for it because now there's nobody controlling the price. And, and that's the other thing that people don't think about is um, if the government's paying for it, then the price is too high because the perver- the person providing that service is now raising their price. It's a, it's um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a giant mess. And the child tax credit, I mean, personally, the way I see it is, uh, and I actually pulled up an article. I, I studied abroad in, in Estonia uh, back in 2009, and one of the cool things about that particular country is they do have a lot of government services, which I may or may not agree with, but they are able to provide a high level or a, 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 a lot more services than a lot of other countries, and they do it with a 20% flat tax rate. So because their taxation is simple, they don't give credits, they don't give deductions, they just say 20% of what you made comes to the government. Wasn't that the fair tax? Weren't the, wasn't that when we were? Remember? Oh God! When was uh, that? Like Herman eight? Cain. Yeah, it was like they're talking about a. It was either seven 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 nine 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 nine. Yeah. yeah, and then there was like the fair tax. Yeah, like hey, we're across the board. We're going to get rid of all these taxes. We're just going to have, you know, X Y Z mm-hmm. said percentage taken out, and we'll disperse accordingly. Yeah, I actually thought it was a good idea. Yeah. And I mean, he was a freaking mathematician. If I was going to have somebody do something, I would want someone who's good with numbers. Yeah. Uh, the, the problem is, um, I mean, yes, it, that's a brilliant, it's a brilliant strategy. This is the, the Estonian model has been in, they've been doing it since the nineties. They did it after the fall of the Soviet union. And again, they, these, this country has a lot of government services, so it's not like they do a flat tax rate and that revenue doesn't go for government services. It, it still goes to provide, uh, I believe they still have free healthcare and, or, uh, you know, subsidized healthcare um, and, and other things. But when you go to those simplified tax systems, what the politicians then lose is the ability to use uh, class warfare and economic <laughs> warfare against the citizens. Because if, you're a voter and you're thinking I don't make that much money and they're going to tax everybody over X, you know, dollar amount. It doesn't affect me. So yeah, I'll, I'll do that. But what, what then they, they're not telling you is that taxation may be raised on the upper income earners, but the government programs were, were, were promising are, is, is higher than, than the amount we'll get in taxes. So then everybody's going to be paying the tax of inflation. Did you see the lady? Oh God, what's her name? Uh, She's like the head of the treasury. Oh, she God. was talking yeah. about an estate tax. So like, let's say a billionaire. Uh, so a billionaire doesn't necessarily mean a billionaire has a billion dollars. No. Let's say he has $5 million and there are 995 yeah. other million dollars is in investments. Mm-hmm. So he hasn't cashed in really on yep. those investments. They're just there, yep. you know, as an asset, you know, they're not like actual cash. Yeah. So they're wanting to tax those. Mm-hmm. So it's like, what if he can't pay the taxes on those? Yep. So, I mean, what, you know, things happen. They start pulling their money out of stocks. They mm-hmm. start liquidating, which, you know, what was it? 1928? 29. 29? The, the crash. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it would make that look like child's play. Yeah. Yeah. And oftentimes those rules are written and they'll say billionaires. And then you start reading the fine print and realizing, wait a second, they're, they're including a lot more people. 400,000 will be yeah. in that. And that's not, you know, I mean, yeah, to us, we're like, hell, that's a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, like of it's not a lot of money, especially with inflation. Now go, this actually goes right back to childcare. Um, uh, you know, it's expensive because of local regulations a lot of times. So that's causing the price to go up. Also, 
inflation over time means it's harder for two people to raise even one kid because now both people have to work. Well, what if our dollar was actually worth something, you know, comparable to what it was 60 years ago, you could have one person working and one person working part-time just to give them something to do if they really want something to do. But um, you wouldn't be forced to have to work or for, you wouldn't have both parents forced to have to work in order to support a family. But even then, if, even if the dollar was worth more and both parents really wanted to work because, you know, a lot of you know people just want something to do, then um, childcare wouldn't be that expensive because they would be able to afford it because the dollar would be worth something. We used to have these things back when I was a kid called babysitters. And that's what I went to. Yeah. (laughs) They made like 50 bucks for the night. Yeah. 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 Why couldn't you just get some college educated kid? that's Mm -hmm. like knows basic Spanish or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, Hey, can you teach my young child X, Y, Z? Well, we expect, you know, we set out a curriculum, like, can you accomplish this? Can you feed them with the food that we already have in our home? The problem is, is just like, oh, the state doesn't get their cut. Well, the state doesn't get their cut. And as soon as something bad happens, because that'll happen. I mean, no matter where you go, there's going to be an accident. There's going to be, uh, you know, there could be some sort of an assault or whatever. Um, people instead but that of, happens already within these institutions. Exactly. But what happens is people want somebody else to make them feel safe. So then they want rules to be written so that they can protect the next person. And all it's doing is, is creating a society of like, is no, it's I'm not, funny when they write these rules. Yeah. Teachers aren't supposed to fuck their students either, but no, they, they still do it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you're not what, supposed to murder people, Yeah, but we got jails full of people who murder people. I mean, yeah. it's like, yeah, we have rules written just because, there's rules doesn't necessarily mean to people who, you know, the large majority of humans will follow the rules to an extent. Yeah. But shitheads are going to be shitheads mm-hmm. and they're going to, you know, not follow the rules. It's oh, just, yeah. I mean, how long have we been walking on this damn earth? I mean, it's just the way it goes. Should yeah. we jump into this? Thing? Yeah, that's, that's rock and roll, man. I'm not excited, but kind of excited. I uh, know, right? I can't stand Let's, listening to some of this stuff. Just He's an interesting cat. So. Yeah. Single penny is not going to raise one single cent. We're going to get into a lot, a lot of those details. Just so though, we, are, are you close, close to a deal? deal? I think so. You know, look, I've been a, I was a senator for 370 years. <laughs> and uh, I was never, I, I was relatively good at putting it. Okay. <laughs> that right there to me, like fucking blows my mind uh-huh. like everybody's like, it is funny but at the same time it's like that's a fucking problem yeah like literally he's not far off i mean it's only missing 300 and what you said 70 yeah 30, yeah 30. About 30 years yeah so i mean that's a problem you have a guy who literally has been in office and this isn't just him this is a, a this whole is, grand group of these. This idiots. is a systemic problem. This isn't a Joe Biden yeah, problem. This is, this a, is this definitely is, the systemic problem yeah. of what's going on in government today. He is making a joke, but he's been in there 50, let's just say 50 years. We'll round it off and look where we are. Mm-hmm. We're still fighting 1960s problems, which are there problems still? Yes. Are they as bad as 19 freaking 60? No. Nope. You know, I mean, that's just a problem with me. Let's get back to it. But <laughs> this next, I, I believe this next line is something that I thought was Better interesting. Deals? Is this the toughest deal you've worked on? No, no. I think banning assault weapons is the toughest deal I worked on and yeah. succeeded. You're flying, you're flying to Europe. I think in eight days. Yes. Do you think you'll have a deal by the time you get on Air Force One well, in eight look, days? You know, it's like my asking you, are you sure your next show is going to be a success? Yes. Uh, you know. <laughs> Well, you're more compromised. Look, it's all something. about compromise. You know, <laughs> compromise become a dirty. One, one thing that sticks out to me is now you like him, you don't like him, whatever. We all have our own opinions. His his poll numbers are sucking right now, and his poll numbers suck so bad that I would imagine that some of those people in the crowd, if it was a you know uh, a representative crowd of of the population, they wouldn't be laughing, and the whole crowd is laughing. He, they. They're throwing him softball so he can knock him out of the park and put him in a friendly environment. And the reality is in America, there is poll numbers suck. So I'm not saying that people need to be booing him, but 
the amount of laughter there just shows me that they're, they, they found a crowd of people who, who are going to, uh, it's not even about being respectful because th- they're laughing at lame jokes. I mean, he's a politician. They're not that funny. Um, <laughs> I mean, seriously, this yeah. is actually serious shit. He's, he's cracking jokes and his poll yeah. numbers, his poll numbers are the real joke. Anyways, well, well, let's get back. Yeah. To this. Just notice the laughter. Every word, but it's bipartisanship and compromise still has to be possible. When I ran for the president, I said, I'm running for three reasons. One, to restore the soul and decency in the country. Two, to build the middle class and working class so they were rebuilt from the middle out. And three, to actually unite the country. And everybody's been saying, well, that's crazy. You can't do it. If we can't eventually unite this country, we're in deep trouble. Bottom line, do you think you will get a deal? I do think I'll get a deal. All right, let's get some, uh, let's go to the audience. This is Nicholas Vaught. He's the uh, coordinator. The Applied Liberal Studies Program at Morgan State University. He's a Democrat, Nicholas. Morgan Christ State. Man. Morgan State. All right, man. <laughs> I was talking, man. So my wife and I have two young boys, Arthur and Teddy. However, the cost of childcare is nearly double our mortgage. We want to have more children. But even though we earn a good salary now, childcare is so expensive. So how will this new infrastructure plan help middle-class families pay for childcare. Well, let me ask you, do you have, how old are your kids? Three and a half and six months old. God love you. <laughs> well, look, there's two pieces. There's the child care, having someone take care of the, your child while you are working, while you and your wife are working. No way. Under this proposal, that how that I have, works? no yeah. one will have to pay unless you're making more than individually. You're making, you know, making over 300 grand, 150,000 a piece. Okay. Uh, Just free. Oh, good. <laughs> By the way, I married you one, Dr. Biden, right here. Yeah, let me pause this for yeah, a second. Yeah. So, like, okay, first of all, if you have two people making three hundred or one hundred fifty thousand a piece, is that what he's trying to say is going to be in this? I, that's mm-hmm. not middle class, if you ask me. And I if mean, it is, that goes back to what I say almost every time, and that's the Federal Reserve is the freaking problem. The monetary policy where we're just destroying the the actual dollar if if 150,000 middle class then we're doing something wrong and well especially if they're saying 300,000 because you know yeah. father and mother yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever you want to call yeah. them today they're saying that's middle class that those people can't afford you know child care and this uh, is this is going to go in. I would say you're living out of your means. If that's- yeah, and if we actually get to the ex- – I mean, because we could talk all day, and there's too much to talk about here. If we get into the education, this will cross over into that. If – like the, the, the problem maybe is our society thinks that our personal decisions need to be funded by somebody else. Is it fair to – like what if you have people who don't want to have kids and they pay taxes? Mm-hmm. Should their tax dollars then go to somebody who wants to have kids – who isn't like in his case, maybe he should look to local ordinances and figuring out why child care is expensive where he's at. Number one, number two, like what is the role in the federal government in, in creating an economy where they can't afford child care in the first place? Like nobody's talking about why it's unaffordable, unaffordable. Instead of asking why it's unaffordable, they're saying, how about somebody pay for mine? Like, no. Yeah. I don't understand why, why should a single person who has decided like me, I'm not single, but I have decided not to have children. Now, why should people who decide to not have children be penalized? That's almost like a penalty. I mean, mm-hmm. you're you're going to pay for this. It's like, no, I'd rather my money go to like roads and bridges and infrastructure. Like we need to get to some kind of like. Well, and then here's I the mean, other we, thing about that. Where in the United States Constitution is it written that child care is the domain of the federal government? It, it, it doesn't actually say that. So yeah. we're, we're putting too many things under the federal plate when a lot of this should be state and local um, because a lot of the conditions that go into raising those prices of their local child care have to do with state and local economic policy as well. So, I mean, I'd just tell the guy to, you know, <laughs> sit down. Next question, please. Like, that would, shoot. <laughs> right. But 
you know, this is an opportunity for people like Biden to um, promise people more things and um, and deliver nothing, yeah. Or you know, maybe deliver free free child care, but at the 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 cost of that is just more inflation. And um, well, they get a child tax credit. Yeah. Like I know people that have two or three kids or whatever, mm-hmm. and he they're always like, oh, I get twelve thousand to fifteen thousand a year Where's at the, at tax tax time. It's like, okay, so I think what they should do is not get that money. It should – because, dude, I know people, they get that money, they buy cars, they buy TVs, they yep. buy bullshit that yep. they don't need. And it's like, no, what they should do is submit their – or it should just come straight out of that. Mm-hmm. It should not – they shouldn't be able to just spin that however the fuck they want. No. We got a question here. Oh, we, oh, a question. A question. Child care for us is 1400 a month yeah. for two kids. That's yeah, no joke. that's fucking bullshit, yeah. you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's it's not I'm not saying it's low, but I, man, it is well, there are a lot of factors that go into making it high. We need to address the high price before we just start slinging dollars around. Yeah, I mean, good god, let's get back into this nonsense. I'm glad we're getting questions, though. That's so sweet. You will not have to pay more than 7% of your income for child care, 7%. And the way we do that is we provide for the ability to have child care centers funded. The money won't even go to you. You know, you the figure income, you get 7% with the total cost. But there's another piece here. You now are qualified to be able to have a child tax credit. <laughs> it used to be that when you, you know, when you, if you were, had enough money to pay significant taxes. They already fucking have this. <laughs> <laughs> this already exists. Well, not the only child that. tax credit already exists, and he's saying seven percent. Let's just do some fucking basic math. I, your freaking phone. I have something. That so three hundred thousand is what he's saying is middle class or whatever earlier. So less see. less taxes. It's it's a lot more. Three hundred thousand. $21,000 a year. Get the fuck. Get fucked, motherfucker. And here's the other thing. He says 7%. What, what cracks So me? he's saying 1400 mm-hmm. for two kids. Yeah. So let's say 1400 times 12. So there's. Yeah. It's a, what is that? The the pinch off? They like pinch off that money? Is that their cut? The, the you know, I don't Fed know. cut? Yeah, it's it's insane, but there again... I mean, and I'm not a math fucking petition. I'm just sitting nah, here doing fuck. some basic fucking math. Well, the other thing that... Th- this is something that people don't re- think of too. Yeah, th- that might be the number he's quoting us today, but when the when the income tax was passed initially at, th- at the federal level, it was 7%, and within a couple of years, it's doubled. And then now, we're looking top income earners are paying 35 so yeah, the government will quote you a number all damn day long, but um, they're just doing that to get it passed. And then once they once they get their fingers in the pot, then it the, the conditions change rapidly. And so again, going like fourteen hundred dollars a month is a lot. That wouldn't be a reality if one our dollar was worth something and people could have freaking afford to survive. And then two, if uh, local ordinance weren't push, putting pressure on on small uh, daycares um, to where I mean it's just harder to have one. I don't I don't even know if you can honestly here at least in this city, but I know. Yeah, I don't know. It, it changes from city to city. I don't know. If I'd want to be involved in that business. Here we go. Let's we, get back to this black market uh, babysitters. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you could write off two thousand bucks for every child you had and reduce your taxes. But if you were making uh, sixty thousand bucks a year, you didn't have that much to write off. You didn't get anything. Well, I call this a tax break for middle class people. If you're making in the $150,000 range right now, you're in a situation where you can get, if you have a child under seven, $350. If you have a child over seven, between seven and 17, you can get $300 and you get a direct payment. You, the, 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 the IRS sends you money. Seven to 17? Yeah. Dude, when I don't know, when I was a kid, uh, we came home and at fucking 17, you should be able to kind of like, uh, you know, live life think, without the yeah, government being involved. Like, I you, think you my brother was can't make toast at 17. Jesus I can't remember if cry. my brother was 10 or if I, I think it was my brother turned 10 uh, and I'm two years younger. We stayed home at that point. We, we, yeah. we let ourselves in the door. Dude, we, yeah. we stayed home from fourth, fifth, all the way up. Yeah. My mom had a list of shit you had to do. Chores, yep. 
he had to get dinner started. Yep. Like, you know, that's why people are like, Oh, you're a really good cook. I was like, fuck, I was doing this shit when I was a kid. Like my mom taught us how to be self-sufficient. Wait, you're a really good cook. Yeah. I can cook pretty goddamn good. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Just- all right, let's get back to this. Yeah. Fuck, Jesus. <laughs> We're only the, the, Joe Manchin wants a work requirement with your enhanced uh, tax credit for for kids. Is that something you would support? No, uh, of course not. The deal. All these people are working anyway. Because if you're staying and home, you can't watch your own kid. You know, if, why should somebody who is not working and, and has a uh, you know uh, makes a uh, has a, a million dollar trust fund. You beat me. You beat me. Why should they get the benefit and someone making 60 grand and not working but staying home? Why should they not get any? Pause. Anything? This is just classic. This is classic. Class on, warfare bullshit. Hold on. Like, yeah. how are you making 60 grand here and not working? Yeah. I want that fucking job. Well, show, show me how you get that job. Well, not how does he make he, any fucking sense? He's deflecting and is, he's assuming that people that stay home are all just trust fund people. And it's like, well. Well, it didn't make sense. He went from a million dollar <laughs> trust fund yeah. to $60,000 a year staying at home. Mm-hmm. It's like people read between the fucking lines. Yeah. You know, I don't like any fucking politician. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. Republican, Democrat, whatever. They can all get fucked. But what about the Green Party? Yeah. I don't fucking know <laughs> enough about that. But well, you gotta fucking listen to the you know, the words yeah. in between the words. Like this is fucking insane, man. Yeah. Like, god damn. Heaven forbid people have to work to this get fucking work. guy, yeah. man. Jesus. All right, let's get back to some nonsense. Yeah. First time ever federal uh paid parental leave. And uh, yes, well, that's the definition. Yeah, right. Yeah, the definition. Right. Yeah. This is, now, this okay. Is your proposal. So, how much time off would parents actually get? I do believe that corporation, giant, cor- they have some fucking moral obligation to take care of their employees. Like, it can't just be about let's just fuck our employees. Like, man, come on. Like, that's just being a decent human yeah. being. You just had a kid. Go home and spend some time with them. Yeah. You're telling me he's giant fucking mega fucking Walmart. They already pay their fucking employees shit. Yep. You can't fucking be a decent human being and just say, hey, you know, we can fill this. I mean, goddamn, they don't fill the fucking 40 lanes they already fucking have there. Yeah, no joke. You know, half of the shit's automated to check in and out. It's like, let the fucking people, you know, they're what is Walmart worth? It's got to be in the billions. Uh, a lot. I know that you know, Walmart, you're telling me you yeah. can't fucking let some eight dollar an hour worker go home and just take care of them. You tell me fucking eight hundred dollars a fucking week or whatever. Yeah, I know they could. They easily could. That's um, fucking bullshit. Yeah. You know, we don't need the government to tell us to be good people. Mm-mm. I mean, we should be able to figure that out. Government is the fucking problem. Yeah. Because they just over-regulate things at, at that point. Yeah. And, oh, and and then regulation, people don't realize regulation too is like going back to about a hundred years ago when they started creating all these uh, federal departments, they're all under the executive branch. Mm. So a lot of these regulations have the same effect of law, but they fall under the executive branch, not the legislative branch. Because the legislators back then, cre- uh, you know, created legislation that then created these agencies and essentially, they just they they created bills that gave the executive branch their job, and so now, con- uh, you know, people in Congress aren't really doing their job. This is like the re- when people talk shit on deregulation, what they don't understand is regulation is essentially giving the executive branch legislative power. You should not want that. You should want the legislators to do the job they've been elected to do, and then maybe they would be able to have, or maybe they'd be forced to pay attention to how things work, versus just having special interests write their bills for them and their aides read the bills for them. And then they show up in front of cameras and act like a bunch of idiots because all they're trying to do is get reelected. Yeah. Well, and, let's get be there for, yeah, yeah. We'll go all day on this. God damn. We're not even in the first. At one point you talked about one. 12 weeks. Now there's reports. It's down to maybe four weeks. Yeah, it is down to four weeks. And the reason it's down to four weeks, I can't get 12 weeks. And, but, but look, here's, here's the deal guys. You How many say. people do you know? Not a joke. Or maybe yourself have had a circumstance where you are working like a devil. You're making seven bucks an hour, 15 bucks an hour, 20 bucks an hour. And you have a child that's sick at home or you have a mother or father, husband and wife. Real quick. 
you can't be making seven dollars an hour because the fucking minimum wage is more than that. God fucking. And you bless. need to stay home to help them. We're one it's of the few industrial countries I've in never the world that doesn't like have paid myself. leave, <laughs> so that when you stay home to help that person, to take care of that person, you're still getting your pay, and it does not hurt the business at all. The business isn't paying for it. The federal government is paying for it. It's a little bit like, as I said, a tax cut for people who are not able to otherwise take care of their families. And look, I'm looking out here, and a lot of you are part of that sandwich generation. You have young kids, and you have aging parents. And one of the things all the polling data shows, Anderson, is people are more concerned about taking care of the elderly because they don't know what to do than they are even their children. I want to talk about this. I want you to meet Vanessa Antrim from Bowie, Maryland. She's retired. She's a caregiver for her elderly parents. She's a Democrat. Vanessa, your question. Obviously. Yes, Mr. President. My parents have been married for 73 years, and both are dealing with... That's fucking awesome, actually. Both of of them are dealing with dementia. That's My father, who is a veteran, is completely bedridden. And my mom is experiencing issues with walking. I have found the process for me to provide care for them in my home very hard. They have worked all their life only for me to experience a lot of red tape Mm -hmm. to provide support in a loving home environment. What is being done? Do you want to know why there's so much fucking red tape? Yes, I do. Government. Yeah. Like, so when I was in college, I worked as a, uh, so I worked with like hospice That's and right. I didn't know this. different, like, you know, nursing homes, taking care of elderly Yeah. and God damn, dude. I mean, piles of paperwork that you had to fucking read to these poor people. <laughs> and I, you know, I was just like, I memorized it enough to where I was like, hit, I could hit the bullet points yeah. and tell these poor people like, look, here's what you need to know. Here's what you need to know to sue them. X, Y, Z. Yeah. Like, let me hook your equipment up so I can get the fuck out of your hair. Cause I know you don't want to fuck me, sit, you know, sit here and fucking listen to this shit all day long. Yeah. And I mean, it was fucking depressing, you know, and it was just government nonsense. We had to go through all these little fucking bullshit, little, I don't know, seminars, I guess what you'd fucking call it. It was, ah, oh, dude, it was so fucking hard to do. That was like the most, depressing job oh, first yeah. of all they work you to death yep and but there are things out there for people who you know can't afford these things so mm-hmm. um you know that's just government getting in the way really yeah and it, my my dad uh was in hospice when he when he passed away and then he, he was only there for a few hours but he was in specialty care hospital and he he had a he had brain cancer over the last few months. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, I mean, we, he was, we had to kind of take care of him. We had to do, you know, visit him in the hospital and things like that and take time. And you, it's sad because you have to go to work. You have to pay. I mean, and you can't just go sit at the hospital and be with him at that, that time. And and it was heartbreaking to watch my mom go through that because she had to still go to work. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so I definitely have empathy for, for all of that, but it, it goes back again to, we have, this structure that has made it hard to afford to live because through government policies. Well, the you red know, tape she's talking yeah. about is government. Yeah. But I mean, the, again, we, if, if the government pays for everything, then that, all that does is make it because there's not enough tax. There's not enough tax base to pay for all the stuff they're promising. So it, you have to then just start pulling dollars out of nowhere. And then that's just going to make it to where, you know, because infl- right now we're we're seeing crazy inflation, and they rob the from that fund all oh, yeah. the time from our retirement, oh, yeah. from hospital, uh, yeah. Medicare, Medicaid, what I'd all rather, that. Like, what I'd rather see is just again get get rid of regulation, go back to letting legislators make the damn rules, so that, so that they actually do their job because their base pays over one hundred sixty thousand. They need to do their job, but it, it would be much simpler to uh, to have employers, you know, is kind of like paternity and maternity leave where you get leave if your parents are dying or whatever. And then uh, well, like a contract between you and the yeah, business, but or- also um, uh, I was going somewhere else with that. But yeah, it, it it's, 
the, the other thing is what happens is um, with whatever good or service the government wants to provide for free, what what they're not trying to do is minimize the amount of people that need it. Instead, they want to increase the amount of people that need it. So then there, mm-hmm. more people need them. And what I would say is the people who can't afford those things create a program that that helps helps them if, if we're going to create a program. But don't create a program to where – or don't create an economy and then a program to solve a problem. A program that solves a program? Well, yeah. So you create a problem. It's hard to afford. And then you create a program to get, get people to afford that. It's like, why not just make it to where prices are stable and then the people that are left over in that market, in that situation that can't absolutely afford something, then you create a program for them. But instead, they're tr- they make it to where – more and more people can't afford anything, so now everybody right. thinks they need the government to help them. All right, let's get back yeah. to this fucking crazy. Yeah, we're still on this. This is... <laughs> huh? To support the elderly, especially for a middle-class family like mine. Well, first of all, <clears throat> if my mom were here, she'd you're a good daughter, number yes. one. Thank you. Number two, uh, I, uh, I was in a situation like you were. I was making more money. I was making forty-two thousand dollars a year as a senator in 1960. Uh, yeah, although I was listening was a lot of fucking money back then. for thirty-six years, but I still made more money than most people because Senate salaries oh. kept going up. Senate salaries what kept going was, up because they kept uh, voting my, in their uh, pay raises. My dad got sick and he was in hospice, so Jill and I took my dad home. We took care of him in our house, but we were lucky because we had the ability to have. I had a sister who's an angel and a brother who's a wonderful guy, and we all took turns in our house taking care of them. But here's the deal. Right now, under Medicaid, there are 860,000, I think it's 860, don't hold me the exact number, it's over 800,000, who qualify for home health care aid for their parents. But there's no money there. There's no money there. So what we do is we provide the funding for Medicaid to allow you to be able to keep, if your parents had their home, keeping them in their home if you want it, or get help in your home with home care from professionals providing, helping you take care of them, helping you take care of them. And they in many have cases where you're not already. taking care of them in your own home, but they're staying, they're staying in their home, you're going to be able to have the ability to have someone come in and make their meals for them. They don't have to be there 24 seven. So there's a lot of things we're doing. In addition to the process, we're going to be able to train up yeah. those home care workers who are usually okay. minority women, women of color, as well as immigrants. That and was they funny. have the capacity to learn more as they go along to move to the point where they can become practical nurses and things like that. So it makes exactly. a lot of sense and it's cheaper, yeah. cheaper than it is to not do it. One of the other things that Democrats are looking to do is to expand Medicare to include dental, uh, vision, uh, and hearing as well. Given all the negotiations that are going on, will all three of those still be covered? That's a reach. And the reason why it's a reach is not this. I think it's a good idea. Can I? That's not that cool. Yeah. Yeah. Two things. Turn. One, yeah. he glosses over Medicare the fact and... that the Senate salaries keep going up. He doesn't tell you that they all voted for their own the salaries to go up. They, they, the the people in Congress are the ones that write their own paycheck. So, yeah, he, he didn't he didn't bother to mention that. But also, will somebody like I'm bald? Will will somebody make razors for free for me? Can I have what I, I mean? <laughs> I don't have children. Can I get free razors? Like, can I like this is just here? Everybody just gets yeah. Like, everybody gets some. Uh, you yeah. know, I mean, like oh, it's a good idea, but we can't fucking do that. I mean, it's like. Dude, oh God, this guy fucking wears me out. It, well, you know, before you start, what it reminds me of is a student council, uh, like you know, um, election where they just tell you they can do all these things they can't actually do, just so that you like them. And yeah, I mean, I, just it's tell a me popularity the, contest yeah. of like, let me fucking lie to you a whole bunch, yeah. and uh, I can I can stay in this job for fifty fucking years yeah. and accomplish not a goddamn thing, yeah. except. Something he's proud of, a salt weapon ban. And raising my and, own salary. And putting, you know, blacks in jail during the, uh, you know, crack cocaine pandemic, which the Reagan administration and, uh, damn it, what was that, Colonel uh, Oliver North, yeah. they were helping, they were using drug runner or actual drug runners to fly to Nicaragua and other South American countries to fly weapons. Yeah. And then the CIA wasn't actually... I actually wrote a giant thesis on this in college. <laughs> the teacher's like, is this real? I was like, you just got to read. It's all there. Yeah, it's not hard to but find. But anyway, they were flying fucking cocaine back. La cocaina. 
Oh God, it's a dark store. We'll have to do a fucking, uh, that's we'll, actually, that's actually, we'll have, story, we'll have to, uh, yeah. d- I can go balls deep in that, but <laughs> the old saying in these balls deep, huh? Yeah. God, let's get back to this fucking crazy. <laughs> so we should call that. We should call the podcast. Negotiate balls drug deep. <laughs> but here's the thing. Here's the thing. Mr. Manson is, uh, is, is opposed to that as is, uh, um, I think, Senator Sinema is opposed, opposed to all. What he's opposed, opposed to, to is it costs too much fucking money. Yeah. They don't want. He says he doesn't want to further burden Medicare, so that because it will run out of its ability to maintain itself in X number of years. There's ways to fix that, but I'm not interested in that part either. But look, Joe. There's ways to fix it, but Joe, I, I won't tell you. Guy. Mm-hmm. He's a friend, and he's always the end of the day come around and voted for. It. But 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 here's the point. <laughs> I'd like to know what they're squeezing in. You are yeah. in a circumstance that <laughs> you're not able He'll come around. to He'll come around. provide. Let's do the Joe Biden. Well, let me He'll cut the chase. I'm taking yeah. too long. One of the things we're able to do in the meantime is most expensive of these things would be dental. Okay? Dental's now, not that expensive. About, I'm not, don't have a deal on it yet. It really isn't. Maybe getting an I usually pay out of pocket for dental. Yeah, brush your from teeth. From Medicare. Yeah. Don't eat a bunch of fucking sugar. Need. Brush your teeth. Use Listerine. Get a fucking checkup is a once very a year, twice a year. Yeah. As Christmas Pretty simple. Sports just points out, hearing tooth is directly like related bucks. to dementia. When you can't hear, you have a problem, and it impacts on dementia. He so now he's a doctor, so and he's going to give us a lesson to, on dementia. And it's cheaper to be able to take care of hearing. But I think I've been able to take care of that without changing Medicare, because what's happening is now you have these hearing aid companies you no longer no, we went have from to dimension go to the to doctor yeah. and spend five grand and get it apart. You can go and buy Walgreens and buy over the counter yeah. hearing aid. So, so, so the harder one though is we we, we so, haven't gotten a consensus yet. Interesting on how to deal thing, with, just uh, off topic. Scene, like, Twelve minutes. Into this. <laughs> yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> one thing to fucking ask here. So he's talking about you know. Uh, over-the-counter hearing aids. You know what else is over-the-counter? I wonder if it actually counts, though. They have a over-the-counter uh, COVID test. Huh. I wonder if you could use that and be like, well, I gave myself the fucking test. Here's the result. It's a rapid test. They'd be like, no, we need the official government test. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, okay. I thought it was funny because I seen it in the store, and I was like, over the counter. what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, is that a thing? Yeah. Nah, Here crazy. we are. Here we are. It's like fuck this guy. Glasses, and uh, but that's so it's not done yet. Is the answer? All right, uh, I, uh, I want to get into the question. It's not done uh, yet. Ben Frederick, uh, Ben is a realtor, lifelong resident of Baltimore. He's an independent, serves on the Maryland Multi Housing By the Association. Way, ben, the Bidens all hail from Baltimore, beginning in 1850. <laughs> so, I don't know how they're fucking me awesome. <laughs> Oh, cool. Ben, I'm just going to relate to the guy. I know it kind of shows that the top 5% of income earners pay 60% of the hey, income thanks, taxes brother. in this country. I hear you repeatedly say that the wealthy are not paying their fair share of income taxes. What is the percentage of income that you believe is fair? Well, I think what's fair is that the present tax code, the highest tax rate is 35%. Get ready, number one. Okay. Number two. You're in a circumstance where corporate America is not paying their fair share. And I come from the corporate state of the world, Delaware. More corporations in Delaware than every other state in the union combined. Okay? So the deal, that's interesting he fit. says that because you don't even have to fucking live in Delaware to make your LLC or whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, Delaware. It's just kind of a, uh, you know, that's that's a skewed idea that he's throwing out there mm-hmm. because when you filed a, a, a LLC or a corporation or whatever, you can choose it to be a Delaware. So don't let him throw you off with that. That's kind of nonsense that you don't even have to live in the fucking state yeah. of Delaware. What am I, before you start, they just my, have good tax yeah. incentives. Yeah. Well, before you start, um, well, first of all, one of my favorite things about Delaware is the reference in Wayne's world to Delaware <laughs> when they're like, we're Delaware. We're in Delaware. Do you remember that? Like, God, it's been like, a minute. They have nothing to say about Delaware. Cause nobody knows anything about Delaware. Right. Um, but you know, uh, one of my, uh, one of my spirit animals is John Stossel. Uh, I don't can't remember where he's at these days. He used to be on ABC. He may be on, uh, I, I don't, I can't remember where he's at, but he's a, he's a libertarian guy. He's pretty fun. Um, 
there's a little quote I'm reading about him on the Cato Institute about Estonia. And I studied abroad in the land of Estonia and they're cool people. Like I said, a lot of government services and a low tax rate flat. Well, one of the things John Stossel, Stossel mentioned, this was years ago, other countries have made their citizens' lives better by simplifying and lowering taxes. Estonians need an average of 10 to 15 minutes to file their income taxes. 10 to 15 minutes to file your income tax. God, that'd be fucking yeah, nice. Most do it without leaving their desk. 84% file online. Unsurprisingly, Estonia is booming. The former Soviet Republic used to be poor with an average income 65% below its European neighbors. Today, Estonians are almost as rich as their neighbors and their con- their economy is growing more than 11% a year. Corporations like it, like a tax system that is low and simple too. And that leads to them doing more business in a flat ta- in flat tax countries. Now, it's not that corporations are trying to... Uh, I mean, the reality is businesses shouldn't be taxed. And I know a lot of people don't understand that, but the re- when, when, you, when you tax a business, they employ less people and their goods and services go up. Their prices, their goods and services. So if the people that work for the corporations, which everybody that works for a corporation is a person, if you tax them, that's where your taxes come from. They don't come from the business. They come from taxing the people that work for the business. But when, when companies can per- know what they're going to pay year in, year out, they have some level of predictability. They're more likely to do business with you. But the Estonia, just by going to a flat tax rate, lifted themselves uh, economically. And if anybody is, doesn't know anything about Estonia, it's, well, that's, you're not, you're, that's not rare. Most people know nothing about Estonia because it's a tiny country. So this tiny country with, I mean, they're, they're just west of Russia. Um, and they're afraid of Russia. I mean, they, they have security concerns there. They don't have a, a large population. It's, I believe, less than 2 million people, if I remember correctly. Um, they're small. And so it's very difficult for them to necessarily you know, raise their, their standards relative to some of their bigger neighbors. And they were able to do that through flat taxation. And again, they have government services, a high degree of them. But... Um, they didn't like he's talking about 35% is the upper income earner. That's, that's too much. Yeah. That's way too much. Let's see what else uncle Joe has to say. They called Joseph Stalin, uncle Joe as well. Yeah. I knew that. But. Yeah. You get to know. D5 corporations, for example, <laughs> in the United States of America, America making over $40 billion. Dollars. Don't pay a cent. Don't pay Not a cent. single I fucking hate cent. when he does that. Now, I don't care. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a capitalist. I'm hoping you can be a millionaire or a billionaire. I, right. Not a problem. So At we could tax the fuck share. out of you. Chip in a little bit. Well, let me, fo- let, so- me let me follow up because Kirsten Cinema, who you mentioned, Senator Cinema, is opposed to any tax rate hikes for corporations and for high earners. Speaker Pelosi suggested today she could accept that. Question is, A, would you accept that? No rate hikes, tax rate hikes for corporations or high earners. And if so, how would you pay for this plan otherwise? Because you don't have to look. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. The tax rate, the corporate tax rate was 35 point something, 37 percent. Brock and I thought it should come down. We thought it should come down to 28 percent. In the process, it came down to 21 percent under Trump, which even the corporate leaders and, you know, if you're in real estate, major real estate, ask them. They know they should be paying a little more than 21 percent. I hate when he does that. Because the idea like you're a fucking you're a idiot. school teacher and a firefighter, you're paying at a higher tax rate than they are as a percentage of your, of your taxes. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. I believe that we can do the fun. We can pay for this whole thing. I have it written in a card here, but I won't bore you with the detail. But, for example, if you, in fact, made sure that you paid a minimum 15%, minimum 15% if you're paying nothing, minimum 15 that's almost that's over almost four hundred billion dollars over ten years. So you would be what? willing to go along with what Senator Cinema and it seems yeah. like Speaker Pelosi is willing to consider what? no, no. tax hike I think for everybody corporations should pay 15%. or for high earning individuals. Here's what I'm willing to do. I'm willing to make sure that we pay for everything without anyone making less than four hundred thousand dollars paying a single cent more in taxes. That's my objective. And so there's ways to do that. For example, you covered it on your show, the minimum international tax of 15 percent. But no, no rate, actual rate hikes. No, no I, I don't think we're going to be able to get the vote. Look, <laughs> when you're in the United States Senate and you're a president of the United States and you have 50 Democrats, every one is a president. <laughs> every single what? one. So you got to hmm. work things out. That's interesting. But where I no, am, is I'm, I'm hearing now, I'll, I'll, I'll turn on the news and I'll it's hear. just dumb you people Biden's down with some stupid so said, look, shit. Biden's mm-hmm. a simple proposition. Biden's going to get 
All the elements of these two bills have profound impact on economic growth, reduce not increase inflation, don't add a penny to the debt, as well as grow the economy. According, to, I have 17 Nobel laureates in economics. Okay, you found 17 Se- people to agree with you. That congratulations. They're, <laughs> well, they're probably shitheads too. It's not gonna. Uh, what do you say? Uh, raise the debt. It's because you fuckers want to raise the debt ceiling. Yeah. That. It's yeah. common knowledge. You raise the debt ceiling and you raise the debt, then mm-hmm. it doesn't go over it. Oh, yeah, I didn't raise the debt because I raised the ceiling. I'm a, uh, I raised the amount of debt mm-hmm. we can have. So last year during uh, God, the uh, – fucking damn, dude. It's like just blatant fucking lies. <clears throat> well, here's the other thing too. It's it's if – and a lot of people that would be watching this probably paying some attention to things. Um, last year at the height of the the – the pandemic, you know, we're really deep into this. Um, I, in June, the, that, uh, Klaus Schwab of the world economic forum, the founder of the world economic forum, uh, published, uh, COVID-19, the great reset. This isn't a conspiracy theory book. This is a book written by the founder of the world economic forum and on the world economic forums website. I'm currently looking at it right now on 13 July, 2020, a, uh, article was published. Here, to- you want me to throw a link on that? Oh, hell yeah. Uh, I should have sent this over to you, to be honest with you. Um, I wish you. I could just write the link in there. Just keep reading it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This The headline, to build back better, we must reinvent capitalism. Here's how. Build back better is the tagline this guy's in a, Biden has been using for his his uh, economic policies and his and his reforms he's looking at making. These, the things we're talking about here in this uh, in this town hall. He didn't come up with Build Back Better. Build Back Better was spoon fed to him by people, uh, institutions right. like the yeah, okay. WorldEconomicForum.com or .org, excuse me. Um, and you know, it's not like he didn't come up with it. Uh, Justin Trudeau has been talking about it. All these world leaders have been talking about it. the Australians who are still um, creating a. Uh, um, a society where uh, some people are allowed to be free and others aren't, they've been talking about build back better and they're getting these policies from, you know, institutions like the world economic forum. They're not coming up with them on their own and they're using the pandemic as an excuse to um, create their fantasy land where they have control of everything. It's pretty transparent. I mean, just poke around the world economic forum website and read their articles. Even some in, in is, is late or as early as 2016. These people are creeps. Oh, there's no and they're mainstream doubt. creeps. No doubt. This isn't like Alex Jones stuff. These are people who are, who are experts. I'm using air fingers quotes. I, I am realizing, Oh, it's over here. The box cover <laughs> cuts off some of my hands. There we go. Experts. There we go. Yeah. Let's go back to yeah, this so. craziness. Sent me a letter recently saying that my proposals would actually reduce inflation, diminish inflation. But here's the point. The point of it all is that I'm prepared. I, I, I can't think of anything that was consequential and changing the circumstance for the middle class and working class in America that came as a consequence of a single piece of legislation. I got a portrait of Roosevelt in my office. Okay. Social security is not anything like it is today when he passed it. It evolved, it moved, it grew. So I'm prepared to do the things that can get done now that can begin to change the lives of ordinary Americans to give them a fighting chance and come back and try to get others late. Let's talk about another one of those things. This is Sandra Gutman, an English professor at... Yeah, uh, education, here we go. Also, Democrat Sandra, what's your question? And by the way, you got another English professor who teaches writing here. Oh, get the fuck out of here. Thank you for taking my question, Mr. President. We've heard in the news that the proposal for two years of free community college may be cut from your economic package. Um, An educated citizenry is absolutely crucial to solving complex problems of climate change. And the systematic um, inequities in this country. Oh. Uh, We hope that this is not cut from the package, but if it is, what can you do to ensure that all Americans oh, goes can get off on the child education talks they need to face these issues? <laughs> First of all, Professor, you made a very profound point. I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I wrote this down. And that is, and Jill uses a slightly different phrase, any country that out-educates us will out-compete us. 
<laughs> any country that out educational out, out educational out compete us. I got something. You have you. the vast majority of the thirty seven major corporate countries in the world economies. We rank thirty five in our investment in education. We're in a situation where, if you if you think about it, when we what caused us to move ahead and 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 dominate the twentieth century in the late nineteen hundreds and the early nineteen hundreds, late eighteen nineties, we came up with said twelve years of free education. That was revolutionary at the time. Revolutionary. I mean, seriously. What revolution? Now, if we were sitting down today and saying, "No, we got to put together an education system." Raise your hand if anybody thinks 12 years is enough to compete in the 21st century. So <laughs> that's why what I propose is free child, free school, free school for every three and four year old in America, no matter what their background. Free school for a three year old. Yeah. No matter what. Pauses for a second. From, yeah. They yeah. increase exponentially the this. prospects of succeeding um, all the way through. Oh my God. So yeah, 12 is absolutely enough. The problem with the, in the, the this community college thing is is interesting to me because like you you had your education paid for by the military, right? Yeah, but yeah. I went and fought a fucking war for it. You yeah, know? like yeah, the idea that so I did my first two years at community college and it's not fucking that expensive. The idea of community college is supposed to you go there, you knock your basics out. It's supposed to be a college for working people. Yeah, you literally it's not that fucking hard. I'm not that goddamn smart, and I aced it. All you have to fucking do is, I mean, was designed to go to work and go to school and to be able to pay that off. Um, you know, now it got more expensive the more, you know, government gets involved in it because they're guaranteed fucking loans from the mm -hmm. federal government, you know, to buy computers. I've watched so many fucking people get that money and all they fucking did was go and fucking party with it. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, I don't have my computers. Like, bitch, you're supposed to use that money to buy school supplies, not fucking computers and bullshit. Yeah. This, uh, this, this issue is intertwined with taxation. And um, I started out as an art major. Yeah. I switched. All right. Excuse me. I started out as an art major. I added Russian as a, as a second major. And then I switched to international studies and then dropped Russian as a, the, the, the Russian major. <coughs> I still, you know, I took Russian classes. I just didn't major in it, but I changed my major a couple of times. I did too. And I, my mind was subs when I, my education, the, you know, the way I understand it, my tuition was waived because of the national guard. I took advantage of the national guards program. Um, but I, you know, I, I did sign up and I was in that, but, um, you know, I don't, so I don't know how the, the, the accounting necessarily works at the university level, but my understanding was the tuition was waived. So it wasn't like tax money went to pay for it, but I, I'm sure there's still a, a tax burden in some, in, in some way because they had to, the university had to account for it, you know, somewhere. But, um, one thing that, you know, I took advantage of that program and, and, but I, I would have graduated faster had I been on the hook for my education. I would have maybe been more clear. I maybe would have not gone to college right after high school. Um, had I been on the hook for my own education. And so if we give free college to anyone, no matter how many years, how many people would abuse that by not taking their, their, their time in college seriously, number one. And then, um, it, it, you know, so that, well, then they're not going to be minimizing their, their burden on the taxpayer. Um, because again, if somebody decides not to go to college, should they have to pay for somebody else who does want to go to college? Here's my my theory on college and how it should work. Now, I listen to Joe Rogan a lot, and I loved this idea. He said that college should be a place almost like community college. So, so if there's state colleges, this, that means the state government has a lot of influence on mm -hmm. how money is dispersed to them. I don't think we should have federal grants to college. What I think college should be is like, $20,000 for four years. That way a person can literally go to college and work and pay that debt off. So when they actually fucking graduate, they have no fucking debt. Yeah. Cause $20,000 divided by four is not very fucking much. But Five grand. You could literally pay that off with a bar or the waitress job. Yep. It, and it, what it does is not only teaches responsibility of going to fucking school and getting your shit correct, you don't waste fucking time at college going for bullshit ass degrees like underwater basket weaving shit. Yeah. You actually like, I need a, a degree, but, but there also has to be some responsibility 
on those, what did they call the little counselors, but they're like students, the ones that oh, enroll you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they should have right. like, hey. Academic if, advisors. Yeah. If you're going to get this bullshit degree, here's the things you're not going to be able to do. Yeah. Not just like, oh, that's a good idea. You should totally get fucking, well, I don't know. There was like gender studies oh, yeah. or like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, there was some like weird degrees. It was just, oh, there was weird other like art degrees or like sociology degrees. Mm-hmm. It's like, no man, like you could have like a minor in those things, but it shouldn't be your main focus. Well, that and and you know, I raised my hand. Of course, I'm not in the crowd when he says this, but I raised my hand if I thought 12 years was enough. Because here's the other thing: we're talking about giving free community college. You know, two years. I know they really want to do free four year. I know that's the goal eventually. If education is that important. Um, then why not make the secondary education actually good? If, if high school diplomas were actually, were actually good, like you actually learn things in high school, you wouldn't, most people wouldn't need college, but the problem is they keep lowering the standards. Why? Because it's free because the government runs it. Now I, I'm not going to tell you, I have the perfect, perfect solution for that. Um, cause I do understand the need for, for public education. It's not as easy as just being purely libertarian and making everybody, figure it out themselves all the time. But the reality is government does a horrible job. And um, yeah, I'm, you're hearing more and more about how certain you know things that were considered part of our core curriculum keep getting dropped from certain uh, school districts so that people can still graduate. You're getting now to where people are less and less literate upon graduation <laughs> yeah. just so the government can say that the graduate, the graduation rates higher. Well, why don't we make that experience that, high school experience actually means something. People don't realize Mark Zuckerberg dropped out of Harvard because the high school he went to, which was very expensive, by the way, um, was better than most people's college degree. He went to Phillips Exeter Academy. I I think that's in Maryland. Don't quote me on that, but uh, it's, it's somewhere back East. And that, that is such an elite school that by the time he graduated high school, he had more education than most people have after college. Well, so like with, so yesterday, uh, my girlfriend sent me this uh, article here in Oklahoma, and it's shit I'm always preaching about how college should have two different pipelines. Not everybody needs to go to fucking college. No, we need if they're talking about building back better. Well, don't you need fucking employees to go from high school to these types of jobs? Yep. So you know, after your sophomore year, you should go college pipeline or work pipeline. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the work pipeline, that's where you have your carpenters, your Mm -hmm. framers, your electrical, your plumbing, your X, Y, Z. And that way they're already almost a freaking apprentice or a journeyman when they're done with high school. And you have like a work program where they can go out and work and get this trade. But if you decide to go that route, they teach you how to run your own business, oh, yeah. run, you know, QuickBooks, how to, you know, balance a checkbook, how credit works, how credit cards work, like actual fucking life skills. And what do they call it? The Socratic method. Like we need to be teaching kids how to have like actual good conversations yeah. instead of like, I'm right. You're wrong. Like, yeah. Hey, let's, ha- let's have the debate. Yeah. And let's th- teach civics yeah like, and, a, I mean, and a huge the the crt stuff that everybody's up in arms up. by the way i want to acknowledge that uh this one Mid- ready kilowatt he's doing pretty good no i just appreciate the the comments yeah yeah awesome. man appreciate it but um no like the crt thing like they, they somehow it became you're you're either racist or you're you support critical race theory and you're non-racist but the reality is is <laughs> i'm not racist and i absolutely despise crt because the foundation of it is a Marxist philosophy. I mean, critical theory comes from the Frankfurt School, which is, according to the people who came up with this, overtly a Marxist uh, philosophical school. There's actually a website that puts those two things side by side, and they've literally just changed a couple fucking words. Yeah, so they're they're, they're ramming that crap down people's throats, and I'm not going to, we don't, maybe this is another podcast idea, but um, I mean, you start reading Karl Marx, the dude, the dude was sucked at history, sucked at economics, and he, he was a turd. And there's nothing about his philosophy that's morally or intellectually superior. And it, it was it was a utopian pipe dream 
that if you actually read what he said, it was very tyrannical. And they're trying to ram this crap down people's throats and create division instead of actually expanding people's understanding of history. Um, you know, like anthropology is a scientific way of looking at history. But if you look at anthropology and and just you know historical documents in general, you start to get a framework for why we developed a certain way. And then you can maybe calm down like this indigenous people. Like I, I actually I have nothing against celebrating indigenous people or even like not caring about Columbus Day. I actually not that it's not that. Hard it should be Leif Erikson Day. Absolutely. But, I mean, he actually yeah. discovered fucking America. Sure. But the, 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 and I, I have, and like any, but most people like that I knew growing up had Native American, and I have a little bit in me as well. I as well. But well, like what people don't acknowledge is, yeah, Columbus was kind of a shithead. Sure. The Spanish were definitely shitheads. But the, the Aztecs, well, but prior to the Aztecs, the Mayans, they were ripping people's hearts out, hearts out and throwing them down pyramids. It's not like they were angels too. And, and so we've got this, I mean, we're not teaching history in context to say that it's full of blood. It's full of conquest. That's how everybody around the world operated. Yeah. We need to be better today, but instead they're trying to like create well, we could a, give a whole history on. Yeah. That, that yeah. Shit. But that's, this is, this Hell, is, what was the state that was created in Africa where they sent a bunch of Liberian slaves Liberian. ended up turning into this giant, mm -hmm. like, yeah. Yeah. Like just evil, corrupt. Yeah. So we're teaching ideas and philosophies that were created in the early 20th century that were based on horrible understanding of history and Marxism and Freudian psychology. And there were some creeps involved with that too. Um, and instead of just, expanding our understanding of history and, and learning the historical context, we're still arguing over this crap. And it's, I don't know. Oh, that's I, crazy. I got on a tangent there. I don't know where it was actually going other than to say that. Well, the idea sucks. to like tell one set of children that you can't be a part of the conversation due yeah. to your ethnic race oh, or, yeah. you know, whatever is not how we solve problems. Not that, at all you got to come together and be like, Hey, what are the problems you're experiencing? How can we fix this? How yeah. can we get rid of these stereotypes? How, I mean, improve the socioeconomic it's, conditions. Of it's the just not going to yeah. fix it no. by just acting like it doesn't exist and creating something that's more racist than, you know, it's ridiculous. I'm a victim. You're an oppressor. Yeah. And so a be, young child, because I'm a victim and you're an oppressor, I'm going to oppress you now because to, to make up for what happened it's you like know, 200 years school ago. School needs to be focused on, as a child, up to I sophomore Shit. year, reading, writing, arithmetic. Make sure you know those things and you have them nailed down. And then when you get older, we start pushing toward the workforce. Yeah, reading, writing, arithmetic, and getting along with people of all colors. Yeah. Just get along with them, play with them, like yeah. share with them. Like that, that having those positive experiences at an early age will do much more. Well, they actually have st statistic data that young black kids that grow up actually in a white neighborhood have a higher success rate, you know, in the world mm -hmm. than they do when they grow up in, you know, more of a, their own. I yeah, like this last comment, the jurisprudence you know, regarding the law, <laughs> absolutely early progressive era. We started really getting into case law precedents as being a, a, a the way we view things versus just the, and it's not to say we need to keep the constitution the exact same. It was written. Obviously changes have happened over time, but that constitutional process is very important. Well, it gives you a baseline. Yeah. It's not that we can't amend things. Yeah. And improve and over at, time. Yeah. Man. Like I'm not a, like the constitution is, you know, should never be the core elements should never be changed. The we, process should be followed. That's the yeah, big thing. Yeah. It gives you, you know, like a, a instruction <laughs> manual on how to keep going. It's fuck, let's get on with this <laughs> fucking nonsense. I, I like his comments. Yeah, yeah they're good. Dude, we're we're nineteen twelve minutes, years wow. of school. You know, you know all the statistics. We're gonna have the to do a part two. That if you come from a home where there's no books in the home and a single mom or a single dad, they don't. They're not well educated. They don't talk a lot. The kids from a middle class, <laughs> middle talk, class home versus that home, will go to school <laughs> having heard talk. one million more words spoken. Mute parents. Child who did. A gigantic disadvantage. Mr. President, the, so, the, the question was on the, the <laughs> uh, community college, no, which, no, which, no. which was a big campaign promise that, that you made. You talked about that a lot. Oh, I, that, yeah, so, and I'm, I'm going to get it done. And if I don't, I'll be sleeping alone for a long time. But here's the deal. I'm sure you're already sleeping alone, so sir. So far, Mr. Manchin, 
And one other <laughs> person right. has indicated they will not support free community college. So what, I, what I think we can get done is we can significantly increase the amount of money by 500 bucks a, a, a payment for Pell Grants. Yibbity, and yibbity. Pell Grants are available and they can factor up to 30% of the cost of community college and or and or college help tuition. So it's not going to get us there. It's not going to get us the whole thing. But it is a start. I'm convinced, absolutely positively convinced, that we're going to be able to, and by the way, we have in the law, in the legislation, money for <coughs> community colleges that, that deal with dealing with uh, uh, apprenticeships, yeah. dealing with teaching people com particular skills that are not getting... So we're going to wait till college to, degree, but to we're teach fucking you teach you that. <laughs> so I think we can get all of that to done to this time out. But I promise you, I guarantee you, we're going to get free community college in the next several years. What would, across the board. What was that conversation... So he when totally avoids that able, lady's be fucking able to get question. This bill at this time, if you notice, and it, you had this goes off Biden on a that fucking night. tangent. What was that conversation like? How'd you break that news? Well, the White House has a lot of bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and she went like this <laughs> down the hall. So he just makes no, look, shit up. It, it really makes it's a gigantic insane, difference. Dude. And think of this. You have more countries in the world with having providing college, I mean, pr 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 providing professional education beyond 12 years. Mm. We rank like, I think it's, right? don't hold me the number, I think it's 16 or 17 in the world. The don't United States of America, for God's mm. sake. But this what, is about putting us in the game. This is uh, John Meche. He's a doctoral candidate at Morgan <clears throat> State University and an independent. John, welcome. Which where, where are you? Morgan State. Morgan State. I don't even work. Going back to what we said, making high school mean something. Um, Finland, four hour school days, highest test scores in the world. Epic's a lot like that. Yep. Like, so I talked to my niece, you know, and we were, it's kind of funny, but I asked her, I was like, Hey, you like an Epic? She's like, Oh, I love it. And mm -hmm. I was like, why? She goes, you don't have to wear a stupid mask. I started <laughs> fucking laughing so hard. You I was like, oxygen, huh? I was like, well, I get, I get that. I was like, yeah. but is there any other thing? She was like, Oh, we don't have to go to school very long. We get one on one with the teacher. Yeah. You know, she's super social with her gymnastics and shit. So, like, it's not like she's not getting her social activity or whatever. Yeah. No cursive writing, even. Yeah. So, that's, there's a different co cognitive process that goes along with cursive writing, too. And typing and writing are different. No, we obviously need to know how to type, but cognitive processing is, is different with each, and they both have value. And yeah, they're going away from some of that stuff. And it's absolutely pathetic. Um, but yeah, going back to Epic, what's up? <laughs> That's funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, that was funny. Up. I'm so glad you're here. Uh, yeah, you're, you're uh, I wanna, I wanna know definitely you're, cracking us up. Yeah, uh, this is good. Uh, <laughs> you know, I was going somewhere with this damn because he's he's well, he's talking about all these other countries. One thing that's people again don't put that into context the Russians were good at math and science. Mm -hmm. Um, I have never seen a Russian vehicle for sale in the United States. I've never bought a Russian computer. I've never used a Russian operating system that I know of. Point being is they may have been good at math or science, but they didn't create anything that's that's that of, of worth to the rest of the world. China right now, good at math and science. Um, go to China. This has been going on for years. I have friends, some friends of mine that have studied abroad and lived there for a year. And I've watched different travel um, you know, programs and things like that where this is discussed. Their buildings are falling down after a decade or less than a decade. China? Yes. They may be good at math and science, but they can't create buildings that, that are standing. They're, all of their military technology is pretty much a copy of ours. So they're not original. They're not creative. Now, does that mean they have no worth? Not at all. But I'm just saying, like, there's got to be more to it than just thinking, uh, you know, comparing us to the rest of the world. We, you know, one, we got to learn history. That's actually really, really important. But, uh, you know, make our secondary education um, optimal by looking at who's been don't it, it can't just be simple as like, you know, statistics that he's spouting off. None of these none of these people in the Democratic side, I don't hear too many people on the Republican side either, but none of them are talking about cre creating a secondary education where there's only four hours a day. They instead what they want to do is 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 make us depend on 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 what they want more instead of actually liberating us because 
the eight hour day, the school day was created during the progressive area to create workers, yeah, yeah. to create mindless workers. Well, it's crazy. I mean, like you could have whole days where you just work on being social, building yeah. your social skills. Yeah. You know, it's like play outside play is actually extremely important. Yeah, Sitting down that's why day. Finland does so well. Yep. Like they have a lot of play involved. Yes. It's not like so regimented. Uh -uh. It's like work at your own pace. Yep. That's what's kind of cool about Epic is you you're not like how in the Marine or on the military, but the Marine Corps we used to hear us all the time was, you know, we're gonna teach to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> well, that's how school is. And they do. That's how school is, yeah. you know. It's like school teaches to the lowest common denominator where in epic the kids can advance that want to advance and the kids that are you know yeah. i'm not gonna say slower learners because i was like a slower learner but i i liked to read and you know suck in the knowledge you more. you know honestly that's where this is brilliant so you might have been a better learner had you been able to play more yeah. There are, I mean, there's a physical therapist that's got a really cool model. His name is Gray Cook, and he talks about the importance of something called a cross crawl pattern, where you literally, in some cases, do crawling exercises. One of the side effects of that is to alleviate ADHD. And this, <laughs> we're talking about in an adult population. This isn't just like for kids. If kids are physically challenged in play, let's put that, that's the point of play, by the way, is physical challenge. It develops coordination, it calms you down. And then you can sit in a class and pay attention better if you, and it's not even about burning energy. It's just, it's people don't, th people think about exercise as purely a physical, uh, a muscular, musculoskeletal event, but that it's releases really, releases like endorphins, releases shit. endorphins, but it's also brain training. It's literally brain training. You're practicing movement and that, that trains your brain. And so, um, that's where you get that GT score. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but Epic, you know, like the, the biggest criticism of there is maybe they're, they need to be running their damn organization a little bit better so nobody can criticize them uh, as far as the – I don't remember what the, where they last stood on that. But Well, they're always going to criticize them because they're, they're not successful. part of the public school yeah. system, which, <laughs> you know, uh, directly the oligarchs in that system yeah. are pissed because – there's a successful uh, school system that has good grades, yep. but it's not based around a testing model. No. You know, they're actually just teaching and the kids are just learning. There's not like teachers like we're going to teach to this model or teach you to this point, And then we're kind of like, yeah. oh, we don't know what to do. And my mom was an actual teacher. Yeah. My mom was a secretary uh, at an elementary school. And one of the challenges she, she saw was that you'd get kids literally try to stab other people. And, that I went to schools like that one kid, you know, and then these are because they're emotionally challenged. And again, going back to play, that does help with some of that stuff. But, you know, one kid can destroy an entire day of learning for the rest of the kids if they're emotionally challenged. And so a, a model like Epic allows, um, you know, all kids to be taught the way they need the way they as an individual need to be taught. But also it helps isolate students from kids with emotional challenges that need special attention because again, that an entire day can be ruined by one emotional outburst of, of one kid. And and it's sad because those kids do need special attention. They I've do. ever told you the stories of Harding and Hoover. Huh. You told me a couple, man, you ready. It for used to really make me sad because like, you know, I came from a school that was probably, I don't know. It was pretty well diverse, but there's probably more white kids. And then, of course, we got bust in the middle school into more of the inner city where, you know, the minority was the the majority. And it was the first time I'd ever in my life seen kids be cruel to handicap or, you know, mm -hmm. special, whatever you want to call them. I'd yeah. rather be called handicap. But, yeah, I mean, would just physically harm these children. And, I mean, I was just like, why would you? What kind of fucking people are raising kids that in their mind it's okay to physically harm like yeah. a mentally challenged child? Like I was like, that's some dark shit, yeah. man. I mean. Heinous. Uh, absolutely. We should probably get back on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long have we been rolling on this thing? One hour, 18 minutes. Holy shit. Our, we've reached really a new record. Maybe, yeah. We'll probably wrap it up here and. I've there a couple times, and by the way, uh, the guy who runs we'll my operation. Uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I, I, I keep talking about Delaware State, but they keep saying about Morgan State. You know Morgan State. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, President Biden, I had so much faith in your election win, but based on history, the bipartisan efforts of the Democratic Party are held hostage by rogue <laughs> moderates and Republicans. <laughs> Why not do like the Republicans and usher through the Democratic agenda? What? Well, pause. What? Two reasons. This is no, near and dear to my heart. This is why I got into politics. I got to listen to people justify a president lying to a grand jury and no citizen is allowed to lie to a grand jury. And, they, and I was listening to the media say it was bipartisan to not care about him lying to a grand jury. Why couldn't it be bipartisan to say you can't lie to a grand jury? But this guy is trying to say that if you don't agree with Democrats, you're not bipartisan and that Democrats by, by definite, like they're, their policies are bipartisan, but if Republicans don't support them, then they're not bipartisan. So I don't know where people like what this guy's smoking, but bipartisan doesn't mean we have to agree with your ideas just because you, you're you're a Democrat and you say you're liberal. Um, they're not. They're not liberal, by the way. Um, yeah, that's just yeah. CNN's throwing softballs. They probably they probably selected those people beforehand well that's kind of a ridiculous statement yeah. honestly i mean that's a real ridiculous statement to and they ran through they so bold to say something like that yeah. i mean like let's talk i'm not any fan of trump but the fact that we spent four years in a russia investigation that was, that was actually found out to be false yeah. and found out that the hillary clinton people or whatever foundation or whatever the hell you want to call it was behind most of it. The campaign. Yeah. And it's like, okay, where's that accountability? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, uh, that's just kind of mind boggling. And I've I've told people a number of times, like I understand why nobody, like some people don't like Trump. I get it. He would not have been elected had the media not put him up so that she could beat him. And then when she didn't beat him, they decided to make up this whole Russia thing and while she's a secretary of state, she's somehow her, her, the Clinton foundation is just miraculously getting millions of dollars from Russians. Like that's not a coincidence. And if you think that's a coincidence, go read the definition of a coincidence and, and, and revisit that a little bit. Cause this is, this is just, it's insanity. And it's because of, I mean, I'm not blaming this gentleman. Well, if freaking politicians would be doing the jobs that they've been yeah. chosen or, you know, elected to do. Yeah. Uh, we wouldn't have, the need for Donald Trump. Nope. No, he, they are the reason that all that has the, been created in, in the And again, I'm not blaming this particular gentleman, but it's this, <laughs> what he's saying is indicative of a larger problem that people trust corporate media like CNN. I mean, CNN employs Chris Cuomo. That's, that's reason enough to not watch them. The fact well, a that lot he, of times all these are owned by the same group. Sure. Like propaganda. I sure. Mean, and and just, that's, and that's a problem too. But Chris Cuomo, I mean like an instant an organization that employs a guy like Chris Cuomo is not trustworthy because that shithead was hanging out outside uh, last year in the height of the pandemic. You know, he's telling everybody else they need to stay inside and, 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 and be little uh, puppets. And he gets to go outside, and when anybody calls him on it, he freaks out and gets in their face and acts like a giant asshole. And he, of course, covered for Plus his- that elitist attitude. Yeah, yeah. You, it, the rules are for you, not yeah. for me. Gavin Newsom in freaking yeah. California telling people that their 12-year-olds and up need to be vaccinated, but his own 12-year-old isn't vaccinated. I mean, that's – anyways, like – It's rules for that. You know, yeah, rules, rules for, for thee, you, not me. Yeah. <laughs> It just, let's, it's let's get back pretty transparent. It. Sorry, I had a little rant there. That oh, I, that's all good. It's pretty, we're going to have to do a part two. Yeah. Maybe part three. <laughs> Zero. So ushering through their agenda. Their agenda right now is just stop Biden. Oh, I shouldn't make it so it's personal. pretty good agenda. Stop honestly. my administration. <laughs> that's what the agenda is. It's much easier to stop something than to start something. And look, what we did is when I wrote, I, I'm going to back up just a second. I apologize. I wrote, I personally, during the campaign, before I got elected, I wrote the infrastructure bill relating to what we do to highways and all that kind of thing, hard hard data. I actually don't have a problem with fixing or crumbling infrastructure. It's now called the care economy. But it's all the bullshit they have. a gigantic piece of environmental pieces in it, too. He wrote that And I went before the joint session of Congress, and I laid out exactly what I was for. And so I made it clear what I was for. Initially, what happened was I got no support for anything from our Republican friends. And then they said, maybe we can work out a bipartisan deal on infrastructure. 
And we did. We worked on it. It didn't give me everything I wanted. didn't have as much money in there for the environment, although it has tens of billions of dollars in there, but didn't have what I wanted in it. But we made a bipartisan deal. <clears throat> now, what's coming along is this reconciliation, they call fancy word for the other pieces that have the child care pieces, have the economy. It's called make it two different bills. Allowing people yeah. to to w women to go back to work. If you really were bipartisan, you're like, okay, let's push this through since we have bipartisanship. We we'll work on this later. Yeah, and, so hard. And, uh, so on. Pretty simple process, And that's Mr. the President. one that is the issue. Well, let me let me ask you, just getting to to his question, <coughs> you, we've talked a lot about Senator Constantly. Manchin and Senator let's Sinema. Get back to you seem action. relatively confident you can kind of get Senator Manchin on board. The, there's a lot of Democrats in the House, in Senate, who are confused about where Senator Senator Sima actually stands on things. And I know she's been negotiating also... directly with you and the White House. What is your read on her? And I obviously you... – the thing they're leaving out here is they're making this like this Republican versus Democrat thing. A lot of reason that these bills aren't actually getting pushed through is because of the far left progressives, mm -hmm. your AOCs, your, you know, whoever. Elon Omar. Yeah. I mean, those folks, that little, what do they call them? The, the squad. The squad. They're the ones raising the most hell. Mm -hmm. They're the reason they can't get the votes. You have the fucking majority. You could push these things through if you wanted. Here, here's the thing, too. A you have a divide in your own party. You have, you know, Democrats, yeah. you have the moderates, and then you have the squad, the far left progressives. Not only that, but we just spent four years of making up a, 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 a load of crap on, on Russia. Why would, after that experience, you know, essentially... You're crying for four years about an election. Why would anybody work with you on the other side? That, and this guy again, the guy that initially wrote uh, asked that question. I guess he forgot when Obama rammed Obamacare through the House and the Senate without Republican support. I don't well, have you been seeing what Obama's been out preaching oh, yeah. at these things? Yeah. Oh my god, dude! Yeah, it's I just mean, like he's like this. He's. He's using his like another one for popularity for you know him being president yeah. to ram this you know this propaganda. Through. Yeah, I've got at some point I've I've got a we'll have to talk about that on another. yeah. There's some audio. There's a there's a audio I can throw up on a, a union leader talking about the Occupy movement before it happened too. Like well, they, we'll, people just don't. We'll push through this yeah. and then we'll probably have a uh, part two. We just we'll get through this. You need her. Uh, to remain positive in your direction, so I don't know what you're going to say, but what is your read oh, on her? Do you know where she stands? First of all, she's smart as the devil, number one. <laughs> number devil. two, she's very supportive of the environmental agenda in my legislation. Very supportive. She's supportive of all, of almost all the things I mentioned relating to everything from a family care to all, to all those issues. Where she's not supportive she says she will not raise a single penny in taxes on the corporate side and or on wealthy people, period. And so that's where it sort of breaks down. There's a few other issues it breaks down on. But what we're trying to do is reach a point here where I'm able to present to the Senate, I'm able to vote on, and the it's probably because she doesn't want to a be taxed. Serious, <laughs> serious piece of legislation that changes the dynamic for working class folks in America and middle class folks, and begins to have the very wealthy and corporate just begin to pay their fair share. Not a lot. How we get not there, we're down to four or five issues, which I'm not going to negotiate on national television, as you might guess. We'd be like, no, 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 I know. Yeah, but all heaven forbid aside, the American people get to hear what you're thinking. We can get there. Look, when you talked about the environmental piece. You said uh, Senator Sinema is, uh, is on board with, with that. Certainly, Senator Manchin. Is not. It gets to our next question. This is from Kobe Kong. He's originally from Anaheim, California. He's a sophomore class president at Johns Hopkins University and Democrat. <laughs> Kobe, it's your Mr. President, <laughs> one of the largest issues that people have trouble comprehending the severity of is climate change. Many legislators and politicians today are lenient as they won't have to live with the future effects. Without the legislative support for the climate aspects of your budget proposal and the earth rapidly approaching the Paris Agreement's 1.5 degrees limit, what other backup plans do you have to ensure a future for the next generations? Well, let's... Man, look at Linda. We'll end it on this, but let's go over what he's talking about. The Paris Agreement, you know, they're talking about uh, 
climate change due to pollution, basically. Every year, America goes down. You know who isn't? You know who the large producer? China. Of? China. So what, essentially, the, we should be punished for the actions of China. Mm -hmm. Because every year, their shit goes up because they don't give a shit mm -hmm. about the environment. I care about the environment. He cares about the environment. No one likes trash. I go and pick up trash all the fucking time in my area. Like, I'm not against electric vehicles. I think hybrid vehicles are, it's a balance of both worlds. Yeah. You know, because uh, the thing they, they often leave out with vehicle, you know, vehicles, because that seems to be the big focus with electric vehicles is you're putting the cart before the fucking horse. You don't even have charging stations built like you do gas stations. Mm -mm. Second of all, it takes like, six hours to charge a fucking electric car. So basically they crush your freedom of movement mm -hmm. because now you can't drive through the nation freely mm -hmm. because you're going to have to stop every fucking, I don't know, three hours. I think they only go for about three hours. Yeah. I think you can drive from here, Oklahoma city to Dallas and then you'd have to charge. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's insane. I think what they should, uh, I've always been a fan of the hydrogen, but they're always like, well, that's not a hundred percent eco-friendly. And I'm like, no, no, yeah, no. but it operates kind of like gas. You pump it in and then you go, Yeah, you know, um, I just, I'm not against electric vehicles, but I think that's more like your city dweller people. Mm -hmm. Like you could, ha if you drove them, the price of those things down, you could drive them around town. It'd be better for the environment. Sure. Like uh, we have a hybrid. So you want to go drive far. Yeah. You have gas. Yeah. But if you want to cruise around town, you're on an electric power. Yep. And yeah, there's so many, and like everything in this on screen with us in our, in our current environment where we're sitting right now is comprised of, um, um, it's comprised of fossil fuels, plastics, everything. So Ending that instantly is not going to happen. Number one, number two, there's peer-reviewed science that that doesn't. I'm not going to say pollution has no effect, but there's peer-reviewed science that just. I mean, like you look at the ice age when it ended, the Younger Dryas period when that happened, uh, the Little Ice Age. Climate change always happens. Climate change is part of the reality of Earth. The Earth tilts and wobbles over time. If you look at a globe, it's not straight up and down. There are a lot of factors that go into the weather patterns and the long-term climate. And the people, some of the people that were involved in setting up our institutions in the early 20th century um, with the last name Rockefeller were involved in Standard Oil. And a lot of major corporations vote for all of the or fund a lot of the major politicians to include people like Biden. Uh, and there, there's a lot of disingenuous uh, commentary. And, and to me, it's that's not good. It, the choice isn't absolute anarchy and chaos and pollution or let the government do everything for you. And we're just going to ram the shit down your throat. Well, think about Oklahoma, for instance, Yeah, majority of homes are piped for natural gas. Yeah. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> ah. So uh, they're piped for uh, I want to thank the uh, ready kill. I really appreciate that last comment. That's awesome. You know, the, uh, or was that? Oh yeah, natural gas. So our homes are piped for natural gas. Well, what what is good about natural gas? So last year when we had the freaking huge ice storm. It's natural. And it. it <laughs> excuse me. It is cleaner. So anyway, your homes can still keep warm in the winter. Mm -hmm. Like we were literally down for like two weeks yep. without power, but we were able to still have gas. Gas. Yeah. We were still able to have heat. Yeah. You know, um, you're going to, if you're going to do that, you're going to have to have every house run. <laughs> Good God. Right at the end of the show, I have a sneeze attack. <laughs> but anyway, you're going to have to He's have every to house. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> you're going to have to have every house with a freaking generator. There's just a lot of things that they leave out that's just common fucking mm -hmm. knowledge. You, natural gas is super clean. Yep. You can put. Ah, oh God filters on these natural gas plants that will fill they'll be actual zero emission mm -hmm. these vehicles out here that run natural gas will look at gas prices across the nation and look at natural gas like at buck 50 a, 
a gallon or however I sell yeah, it. Well, yeah, I can't remember. The, what is the freaking unit they use? You had to say that. I, I would normally know this. Well, whatever it what? is, we'll just say gallon. It's probably wrong, but yeah, you, you get the gist. It's apples and oranges. I mean, it's insane. I mean, we could go on and on. We're going to have a part two to this. Uh, we are working class people. So we, I've got to go to work tonight and you know, save America. Um, he's probably got to sell some houses, but we're just two guys that give a shit. I mean, if there was a Republican here talking, well, we'd be here yep. criticizing that too. There's a lot to criticize. There's yeah, a lot of criticism, criticism to go around. <laughs> Hopefully there's some solutions too. Let's uh, mark our, what, where do we end that? Um, here. I'm going to, <laughs> God Dude, seriously figure it out man oh my god <laughs> we're at uh, 27 <laughs> 18 i'm gonna put that down in a note so i don't forget all right well you better go because you're about to die, yeah, about sneeze, to die. <laughs> sneeze attack well, i'll let you end it while I'm dude all right well thanks for uh, showing up um yeah part two coming soon um be next week next wednesday or thursday yeah next wednesday or thursday we'll be back so appreciate the uh the love and uh until next time, um, we'll see you on the unscripted American. Be free.